The FEI Eventing Nations Cup, the world's only team eventing series, is contested across seven European legs. Demanding the very best from horse and rider as the athletes compete over three tests, dressage, cross country and show jumping. Over the next five months, teams from the top nations in the world of eventing will have travelled from Great Britain to Italy, Poland to Ireland, France to Belgium and finally to the Netherlands in a bid to become the 2019 FEI Eventing Nations Cup champions. The opening leg came from the Saracen Horsefeed Houghton International Horse Trials in the United Kingdom and it was Germany that took the 100 points for the win with Sweden second and Great Britain in third. The series then travelled to Protoni del Bavaro in Italy for leg two and the hosts bagged themselves a valuable second spot with Switzerland earning maximum points for the win. The third leg came from the Strigona Equestrian Centre in Stregem, Poland and it was Germany again taking first place with the help of an individual win from legend Mikkel Jung. So as we approach the halfway stage, only 15 points separate the top five nations in the standings. Sweden lead the race for Olympic qualification, but Italy, Switzerland and the Netherlands are hot on their heels. Campfire, County Waterford, in the south of Ireland, hosted the fourth leg of the series. This unique venue is held on the land of a working farm and is known for its picturesque scenery along the banks of the Blackwater River. The thing about this venue is it's actually two working farms and this is the only other activity that takes place here once a year. If you were here back in April, you'll see nothing but cows in the fields and sheep. Uh, so we have to bring everything out and set it up. So it's quite a big challenge. Now our team have got really good at it. I suppose when you're doing the same thing year in, year out, you get better. Having the Nations Cup has added that extra challenge, I suppose. But I think the team are ready for it and, and uh, they're doing really well. I'm very pleased with how it's all going. Absolutely thrilled because I've been involved here since I was eventing myself, maybe about 15 years ago, and gradually got into running this event with my family, my stepfather, my brother and sister. Uh, and I suppose we've built it up gradually over the last 10 years as an international. So to have the Nations Cup is like a pinnacle for us really. And also for the local area, it has created a, quite a lot of interest this year. I suppose the fact that it's a team competition and it brings so many different nations to this venue. This year, well, I think it's something like 16 nations we have. I think seven or eight teams, which is absolutely fantastic. And that just creates its own excitement and interest, if you like. I'm hoping that everybody enjoys themselves and that we have really good, exciting competition at a really good level and that everybody goes home having enjoyed their visit to this part of Ireland. The teams taking part at the Campfire International Horse Trials were Series leaders Sweden, Italy, Great Britain, Netherlands, Switzerland, Belgium, New Zealand and host nation Ireland. They were to compete in the CCIO four star short format over four days. Two days of dressage, followed by cross country and finally the show jumping. This was the host's first team outing since their silver medal at last year's World Equestrian Games and the team were looking forward to riding back on home soil. Eight WEG was fantastic and I've, I've, again I've had amazing memories and it was brilliant but it's like you kind of put that in a little box. It's lovely to get selected for a Nations Cup team, I really enjoy them, it's good fun, it's good team banter but it's always more special on home soil. Like I really hope we could pull a result this weekend and be on the podium. Um, and Campfire is like it's the most beautiful setting. One nation having a mixed 2019 campaign so far was Switzerland. Having taken the win under new Olympic format rules in Italy, they performed well below par in their other outings, finishing eighth and sixth at Houghton Hall and Stregem respectively. However, chef to keep Dominic Berger still sees many positives. This win was important because it gave a super feedback in Switzerland. People from the other disciplines, they get aware that we are working hard. We have Andrew Nicholson as coach. This gave already a first wave of emotions in Switzerland. And now 
we have a super support also from the Federation because they see it's possible, it's possible. Yeah, we have a, a big objective which is the qualification for Olympics and for that we are working hard in this Nation Cup series but also we are preparing and selecting for the, the Europeans and uh, we look also for individual uh, qualification for Olympics and so far this season is the most competitive season I have ever seen in our team and this makes fun and I think also the results are very promising and it goes well. So we're a young team, we have, we have all young riders, so they are all very promising for the future. I calculated once we are about, in average, 5 to 15 years younger than all teams, and it makes fun. The first phase of the competition was the dressage, a test that consists of a series of compulsory movements at walk, trot and canter gates that is judged from two angles. Unfortunately for Dominic, his young Swiss team failed to get off to a good start in the dressage phase. Patrizia Attinger's 33.8 being their lowest mark and leaving the team bottom of the table in 8th place. It wasn't going much better for the Netherlands. Elaine Penn and Blue Nile put in a score of 29.9, leaving them in 8th place individually. However, with the standard being so high, their team score of 98.2 was only enough for seventh place in the team standings. The hosts were faring slightly better. Sarah Ennis and Woodcourt Garrison scored 35.4, but their team score was helped by Sam Watson and Imperial Sky. A solid 27.7 put them into fourth spot individually after the dressage phase and lifted the team into fifth. New Zealand, competing in their first Nations Cup of the season, were at a disadvantage from the start, having only three riders. With no available drop score, it looked like they might struggle. But with Tim Price scoring 29.4 penalties and Sir Mark Todd faring even better with 28.5, the lack of a fourth teammate was having no negative effect. Great Britain put in their best dressage phase of the series so far. A superb 27.4 from Flora Harris and Amazing was the second best score of the day with teammates Tom McEwen and Rosa Onslow backing up Team GB with solid scores of their own, the Brits completed Phase 1 in second spot. But it was series leaders Sweden who got off to the best start on Irish soil, their top three riders all finishing inside the top 20 of the individual standings. The pick of the bunch being Therese Vickland and Visera. Their dressage test scored 27.4 penalties and secured them top spot on the individual leaderboard as well as Sweden first place in the team standings. Yeah, really happy. I think the riders worked really hard to get the dressage score down and, and uh, it paid off yesterday and today. Very pleased. Therese Wiklund is here. She's had a bit of a break with the horse. She's leading individually, obviously. Uh, that stands out a little bit, but more than anything else, that all four of them are so close to each other, that, that feels really safe and that, that's probably what I'm more pleased than anything. Series leader Sweden topped the table yet again after the dressage phase. Great Britain in second and Italy rounded off the top three. Switzerland was slightly adrift at the bottom of the table, but with only 15 penalties separating all eight teams, Campfire was turning into the most competitive leg of the series so far. The next phase of the competition was the cross-country test and the main focus of the weekend. The objective was to complete Paul Brady's track of 25 obstacles across 3,740 metres of varying terrain and within the optimum time of 6 minutes 34 seconds. It's undulating parkland, we have, you know, we've got everything here because we have the woods, we have the undulations. Uh, we have three water complexes. We've put in a, a new water cl complex this year. There are ditches, there are, you know, it's got, it's got quite a lot of variety. There are lots of fixed fences here rather than portables. It's a mixture of portables and fixed obstacles. So I think that's probably unique as well. There's some quite nice lines here uh, that you can, as a designer, it, there's some great opportunities. I have to be careful, I suppose, with so many opportunities not to have it too intense. 
I want to get them to get off to a nice start, so it's quite straightforward. The beginning of the course, the first water is uh, the first, I suppose, challenge of the Nations Cup. It's, 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 uh, there's a jump in the water and two strides to an angled pheasant feeder on the way out. That's, everybody should get through that fine. And then as you come to the next water fence, which is, I suppose, about one third of the way around the course, then it starts to get a bit more challenging, a bit more intense. And I think probably the two angled shoulders on the hill uh, are probably going to be, I would say that's probably going to be the most influential, I think. I like also to have uh, something a little bit challenging towards the end, so the penultimate is a corner. Uh, right down in with lots of viewing where people can see. On the eve of the cross country, riders got one last chance to walk the course set by Paul Brady. With three water obstacles to negotiate, riders were keen to work out their game plans. I think it's a very nice course. Uh, it looks big, but I think all the distances are very clear. So I'm really looking forward to jump it. The three water complexes are quite different. Uh, the first, uh, you have to ride into the water and then you have uh, two angle fences. Uh, the second one here, you, you have a big jump in. And uh, the third, I think it's uh, the most difficult question is to come out of the water. So all three are really diff different uh, complexes and uh, need good riding. You come down the hill here, uh, so you have quite a bit of speed, so you need a good preparation point. That the last two strides you can ride a little bit to the fence again, because uh, it's a big jump into. And then I think if you can take a little bit, the four strides, a little bit on the curve to the boat, uh, to have a good approach there, then the three strides I think will be quite uh, easy to come out. With the bad weather having cleared up after the dressage, the conditions were now perfect for a day of cross-country action. Overnight leaders Sweden were the first to take on Paul Brady's track with trailblazer Ludwig Svenestal. He attacked the course with ease, negotiating the numerous water obstacles with his ride Balam Mist. This round gave Sweden a foot perfect clear inside the time. Svenestal climbed from 18th to 7th in the individual leaderboard and put the pressure on the other nations. I was very happy with Balamist. He made the job very easy. Most of the round was very nice. He's a naturally really uh, old-fashioned cross-country horse and yeah, he's easy, easy and not very nice horse. As the rain held off, it was Caroline Gerber's turn to take on the campfire course. The Swiss trailblazer and her partner, Trésor de Chinan, had been riding well until they came to the third of the water complexes at 21. After jumping into the water, she missed the flag at the B element. With 20 points added and the extra time it took to come round and complete again, she finished the phase with 31.2 penalties, putting her on a total of 80.6. The compatriot, Camille Guillot, fared slightly better on Paul Brady's course. She managed to avoid a run out at the same obstacle after almost being unseated in the water. The time she took to compose herself played a part though, as she finished over a minute outside the optimum time, picking up another 26.4 penalties to add to her dressage score. The Swiss hopes of a podium finish was over. Lying in 14th individually after the dressage phase was Italy's first line rider, Giovanni Ugolotti. He made the Irish course look easy with his ride noteworthy. After showing great pace in between the obstacles, as well as some solid jumping from the pair, he finished with a time of 6 minutes 26 seconds, 8 seconds inside the course optimum time. He moved up into 5th individually and kept the Italians in the hunt of the podium.
It was great, it was very good fun. The horse answered all my questions and the question of the course. Uh, he jumped and galloped in a great way. I couldn't ask him anymore. Overnight leader, Therese Vickland couldn't capitalise on her lead. Her careful approach around the 25 obstacle course did mean she avoided any serious trouble. But completing in a time of 7 minutes 6 seconds, 32 seconds over the time, added 12.8 penalties to her dressage score. And with the standard so high, this meant she dropped from 1st to 19th. It was a tough course, but she was really fighting through it. It's her first four star since Bokele last year. She hasn't has had an injured. So it was tough, but she's amazing. She just had one eye. So yeah, she's such a fighter. GB's top rider, Flora Harris, and her experienced mount, Amazing, had been going well until reaching the second water. The 15-year-old mare needed reminding of her route as she spooked and got distracted by some of the three-star fences. Luckily for the pair, it had no serious effect on their round and they came home with 3.2 time penalties, eight seconds over the optimum time. The same couldn't be said for teammate Rosa Onslow, however. Her one run out and time of seven minutes, 11 seconds added 34.8 penalties. And with David Dole being eliminated, it left the nation down in sixth after the phase. With New Zealand only having three riders, Tim Price and Bango needed to put in another solid performance across the country. They did just that. Their controlled round and quick pace moved them up four places in the individual standings. New Zealand were piling on the pressure. I'm really quite thrilled for this horse, this horse um, Bango. Not just because he's for the Kiwi team, but he. Uh, ran away with me at badminton quite infamously so um, just to have a bit more control was what I was after. Managed to do that plus get just on the time so I'm really happy with that result and uh, like I say the Kiwis this is all about the Nations Cup we want to you know get stronger through each phase and I hopefully have contributed to that. Belgium were putting in another decent showing in the team competition. The best of the lot being Constantine van Rickevorsel and beat it. His time of 6 minutes 38 picked up only 1.6 time penalties and it certainly delighted the Belgian. He, he was great, he, uh, <laughs> I haven't been fast for a while. I've done so many things a long time ago and now I'm back with two horses. This course is super tough, it's got hills, it's got turns, it's got combinations everywhere. It walked okay but it, it rides, it's quite difficult but I loved it. The hosts really came into their own in the cross country phase their experience of campfire was beginning to show. First line rider, Fred Scala, got Ireland off to the perfect start with a double clear, eating up Paul Brady's track. And when Sam Watson completed the Irish charge with a double clear of his own, the team was starting to believe a win on home soil was possible. Watson moved to the top of the individual standings and the team were up into second. A big step up for Imperial Sky, he's he felt very good last time out here on home soil in Kililki a month ago and I thought um, that he was, a, he was a proper horse ready to produce a proper round cross country and he's done that today at the top level. Um, very, very straight. Yeah, it's, nice, it's, uh, it's nice to ride them when they're, when they're going that well. The Netherlands were polar opposites of the Irish across the country. Elaine Penn was eliminated, Andrew Heffernan added 9.6 time penalties and Althea Bleekman's drop dressage score had now come into play. Tim Lips and Lacoste Zed were also slow. Having mastered the water, he lost time between obstacles. The team were now rooted to the bottom of the table. The Italians were making use of their dropped score when Luisa Pali was eliminated after three refusals, the first of which when exiting the second water complex at fence 10. This meant the rest of the team had to go clear, and when Vittoria Panizon did just that and inside the time, she backed up the earlier score of Giovanni Ugolotti to keep the Italians in the mix. Tim Price's earlier round had set the tone for a fantastic day for the New Zealand team. Janelle Price completed with a clear round four seconds over the time and when anchor rider Sir Mark Todd took on the Irish course, there was only going to be one winner. The partnership of Todd and Leonidas made light work 
galloping through the water with ease and picking up speed across the flat. They finished with a double clear, six seconds inside the course optimum and moved up three places into second spot. The team were now out in front by five penalties. Uh, yeah, I had a very good round out there um, with Leonidas. He's very experienced, of course, um, but uh, this is only his third run back this year after injury. And uh, my teammates put a bit of pressure on and said I had to go clear and inside the time to, so New Zealand could take the lead. But uh, yeah, I'm very pleased we delivered. New Zealand now had a rail in hand going into the show jumping phase after a fantastic day on the cross country course, with all three riders going clear. Host Island had moved up three places into second, and Sweden were managing to cling on to a podium position. It had been a bad day for Great Britain and the Netherlands, with both slipping down the leaderboard. The following morning, all riders presented their horses to the ground jury at the horse inspection. With Switzerland lying in seventh place, the last thing they needed was a withdrawal. However, Patrizia Attinger and Mooney and Mack were sadly withdrawn from the holding box. All others passed fit ahead of the last phase of the competition, the show jumping test. The objective being to prove that the horses have the accuracy and energy in order to clear the course of 12 jumps and 15 efforts that was set by Arne Weistel. With the top four teams being separated by less than 10 penalties, it was all to play for in the podium placings. Sweden was sitting in third spot in the team competition and when Victoria Karlebach and Zlatan went clear, it looked like they would hold on to it. Unfortunately for the Swedes, Ludwig Svenestal had one fence down, Johan Lundin had two fences and eventual drop score Therese Wickland had three fences down. It gave the Italians the chance to leapfrog them in the table. With only three riders remaining, the pressure was on Team Italy. Ariana Guardarelli got them off to the perfect start with a clear, and when Giovanni Ugolotti had one fence down, the pendulum swung back in Sweden's favour. However, their final rider, Vittoria Panizon, held her nerve to complete the 12 jump track without hitting a pole. Her one second over the time added 0.4 penalties to the team's score, securing them at least third place. They were now putting pressure on the Irish in second spot. Sarah Ennis negotiated the show jumping track with ease, securing Ireland their first clear of the phase. But when Brian Morrison picked up 1.2 time penalties, it piled the pressure on last to go Sam Watson. Just one fence down would see Italy climb into second spot. That clear was vital for Watson and Ireland. It secured him first place in the individual standings and the Irish second in the team competition. But it was New Zealand who performed best in the show jumping phase and extended their lead at the top of the table. Janelle Price set up the win with a foot perfect clear. Sir Mark Todd followed that up with a one rail round. And this clear round from Tim Price confirmed the FEI eventing Nations Cup victory with one fence in hand. So a stunning win for New Zealand on only their first outing of the 2019 season. Having only three riders from the start made it all the more impressive. Ireland, also on their first start of the campaign, climbed to a very credible second spot to give the home fans something to cheer about. And it was Italy chasing valuable points on their road to the Olympics in Tokyo 2020 that secured a podium finish. Well, it's been a fantastic week for us. Um, you know, the dressage all went well. And then, of course, cross country is our forte. Uh, 1.6 time penalties only added to the score. And then today, everybody did their jobs again. Janelle, fantastic clear show jumping. Tim, under pressure, clear show jumping. And Mark had one unfortunate, awkward distance. And uh, that secured the win. So it's been a, been a great weekend. It was a bittersweet victory for the Kiwis, however with the shock announcement of Sir Mark Todd's retirement after a career spanning five decades. Uh, well, it's, uh, it's not a decision that I've, I've taken lightly um, to, to come to an end. And in fact, uh, it was only in the last few weeks that uh, I decided that uh, maybe I, it would come to an end here. I think the thing I'll miss most is the, is the camaraderie with uh, all the other riders and all the people involved.
you know, I've had a long and, and pretty successful career. I've had wonderful owners, wonderful sponsors, wonderful people who've worked for me and uh, made a, a huge amount of friends all around the world through, through the sport. So uh, I'm, uh, I'm very grateful for it. After a hard fought third place in Campfire, Italy now topped the series standings, five points ahead of nearest rival Sweden. Netherlands round off the top three, with Switzerland in fourth. With all four nations hoping to gain that Olympic spot on offer, the final three legs of the season could not have any more importance.